Okay, so uh, hi. I am uh, Guillaume Collet and uh, I work uh, here as an engineer at the INRIA IRISA Center. And I am a member of uh, Team uh, DILIS um, and we work on bioinformatics. Uh, but today I will talk about a project from the GenScale team, um, which also work on bioinformatics and we are strongly, strongly interconnected with them. And uh, one of their interests is about genome assembly. But before talking about a little bit about biology, um, to answer uh, what uh, Hugo said this morning, um, in bioinformatics, there is a strong background on open source and uh, free software. Um, and you'll see that um, all our developments are shared, and this allows many collaborations, as you will see. So I'm going to talk about um, genome assembly, so a little bit of biology. Um, and you'll see that this um, biological problem is a huge problem um, for computer scientists. And that's what interests us. And we developed uh, data structures to, um, to calculate, to, to solve this problem. And then I will um, present what um, we've done with the Raspberry Pi. And uh, at the end, I will present this shoebox. So a little bit of biology. What is genome assembly? Uh, we use, a, we quite always use this metaphor. You take 100 copies of the same book, OK? And then you cut it randomly in small pieces. And because you have multiple copies of the book, then the small pieces, some small pieces will overlap. And what you want is to assemble just one book, OK, from many copies. How we assemble it? Just you have some small pieces. And because they overlap, then you can reconstruct the original sentence. It's exactly the same for DNA. In genome assembly, you have a, a living organism, a plant, an animal, something living. And in each cell, you have one copy of the genome, of the DNA. And what you do to um, sequence the DNA is you, you crush. OK, the cells, you have many cells, so you have many times um, the same genome um, with chemical um, experiments. You can break the DNA into small pieces, and then you give it to, to a sequencer, this, uh, this machine here. And then you get small strings of uh, DNA, the red uh, uh, small uh, parts here, and you want to find back the original genome. Okay, this is what we do with genome assembly. And before talking about how we we reconstruct the genome, I want to say that this machine here uh, costs uh, hundreds thousand of dollars. And um, two years ago, something appeared. This, uh, this kind of a flash drive, you see. It's not a so big machine. It costs only a thousand dollars, and it can sequence uh, DNA. And what we also uh, saw for a few years now is uh, different open uh, initiatives, uh, like uh, BioHackerspace and uh, Do-It-Yourself Bio. Um, it's like a fab lab or a hacker space, but for biology. So now, the problem with the, um, with the genome assembly is that reconstruct uh, the original genome is quite um, expensive. Uh, typically, what we do is decomposing the small pieces of uh, DNA into Kamers. Kamers are substrings of size K. And here you have an example on uh, streamers. So if I decompose the first string, you see we have a sliding window. 
and we construct the first line. And each, uh, each node in the so-called Debrin graph uh, overlap with uh, k minus one uh, letters. And if I add the next uh, piece of DNA, you see that I construct a graph that grows. And it grows more and more and more. And for the human genome, it's about 15 uh, gigabytes in memory, if you want to reconstruct with a, a straightforward um, data structure. I mean, you have the camera, so a chart, a string, and the eight possible connected component uh, other cameras. Because when you have a camera, you can add a A, a C, a T, or a G, the four bases of DNA. And this is a little bit uh, too big to calculate, uh, to assemble a genome on a, a laptop computer. You, have, uh, you need um, a cluster of uh, computers with um, more memory than just a laptop computer. And what, what we want is to um, allow genome assembly on a laptop computer. So with less than eight gigabytes on a good uh, laptop computers. And so um, in the GenScale team, uh, two PhD students in um, uh, 2012 came with the idea of using Bloom filters. Bloom filters, it's a data structure when you ask if something is in, the, in a set. And here we have a set of cameras. And in fact, when we go through the, the graph, we begin with the first, like, T, T, C, C, and we, on, we want to extend on the right with a A, a T, a C, or a G. And we can test if we add a T, is C, C, T in the set or not. If, if it is in the set, then we add it, and we can extend with another basis and continue like that. So the Bloom filter is well fitted for that. Bloom filter is just a vector of bits. And uh, for each camer, you just apply a hash function, which gives you an index in the, um, in the vector, and you put the bit to one. Very simple data structure and very compact. The problem is, um, because you use hashing, you have collisions, and different uh, camers may uh, point on the same uh, bit. So if the bit has been um, put to one by one camer, perhaps you will find false positives. And here, to solve this problem and make the Bloom filter exact, they added a false, uh, false positive, um, uh, which are critical. Uh, because if we store all the false positives, then it's like we, we store everything. So it will be too big. And what are false positives? In fact, it's cameras that are reachable from a good one. You see that, for example, uh, on the lower part, you have TAT in our reference uh, genome. And it can be extended with a C, but not with a T. <laughs> okay? And what you want to store is just that it cannot be extended by a T. Because if you don't store this information, you can go in this part of the graph, which is uh, the um, false, OK? It's not the good part. So instead of storing all the false positives, they only store the critical one, uh, the one which are at the boundaries of um, uh, the good one. How is it uh, efficient? Well, this is a, a publication from uh, 2012 uh, presenting uh, MINIA for MINIA Assembler. And um, you see that the number in the red uh, circle are uh, very good. We use less than six gigabytes of memory, uh, where the others use pretty much more. And we use only one core, OK, because it's done on the laptop computers, while the others are done on um, uh, clusters of computers. And I will not describe the numbers uh, um, about biological validity, but it's quite the same, and it's good enough for us. 
And uh, the first version of Minia was distributed openly with a, a GNU Afero license. And now it's integrated in the GATB package, which is a C++ library, uh, which implements this data structure plus some other very um, compact and uh, efficient algorithms to um, explore the Dubrin graph and, uh, in fact, explore many genetic data. All this is um, thanks to these people, uh, Guillaume Risk and Ryan Shiki, who were a PhD student, now they, they have it, and uh, Dominique Lavenier, who is the supervisor, and other people from the GenScale team. And now we have a genome assembly program which runs on a laptop computer. And remember that we have sequencer, next generation sequencer that are uh, flash drive sized, right? And I like to imagine what we can do with that. Something that run on a laptop and um, an efficient and uh, cheaper uh, machine to sequence DNA. But what we did, and what I did, is uh, proposing to put Minya on a Raspberry Pi. So uh, Raspberry Pi, you, you, I hope you know it. It's very famous because it's a very small system, but with everything, uh, like um, a computer, you can um, plug a, a screen, keyboard, etc. And um, our aim here is to test if Minya is so um, efficient to, to compact data. So on the human genome, we see that it, it takes um, less than six giga gigabytes of memory. Um, so we search for smaller um, genomes for the Raspberry Pi because there's only uh, 500 and uh, 12 uh, megabytes of memory. And when we just calculated a theoretical uh, ratio, we see that uh, the yeast, okay, the yeast is S. cerevisiae, it's a yeast. Uh, C. elegans is this worm, and okay, human, it's human. Uh, and we see that it fits in the memory of, um, of the Raspberry Pi. So we know that we tried to assemble the genome of all the species on, um, on the Raspberry Pi, and the human is not possible. So we we know, uh, already know that. But for um, the yeast, we thought that it was possible. And in fact, when we tried it the first time, um, the memory was full uh, immediately. And this is where, um, uh, you said it before, this is where the hardware constraints developed uh, software creativity because we have to find a way to make it fit. And this was just a question of buffers. We have many buffers to, to um, manage the cameras, a hundred of them, and each was two megabytes long, so it was too much. Uh, so we reduced it and it works. So we managed to assemble uh, the first uh, time um, the yeast on uh, on a Raspberry Pi, and then the the game was to see how much we can uh, um, assemble. So we tried uh, the worm, uh, C. elegans, and it worked also. And then what what's next? Because um, we've done it for a, a genome of. Uh, 100 million base pairs. Um, it's good enough. But we wanted to tell to the community, bioinformatic community, that it is available. Uh, it is compact. You can run it on different machines. And because it's a Raspberry Pi, we thought that it was great to assemble the Raspberry genome on the Raspberry Pi. But you see that the theoretical um, size of just the Dubrin graph is about uh, 400 uh, megabytes. And uh, we didn't know if it was possible, and in fact it was not at the beginning, uh, to assemble uh, the Raspberry on the Raspberry Pi. 
And uh, thanks to open source uh, software, we met this guy, Gregory Kucherov, who implemented a um, cascading bloom filter, not just a bloom filter, but a cascading bloom filter, which reduced uh, the size of the Debring graph. And then we were able to assemble the Raspberry on the Raspberry. So to conclude about that, uh, we have um, a software a program, Minia, which is open and available in the GATB um, package. Uh, you see that what is interesting in bioinformatics and what I like is that data are so, uh, not always so big, but the combinatorial things and the complexity of uh, living things is so great that it gives us, as a computer scientist, very interesting problems. That's what I want to say in big data and its tricky data structures. It's more general. And finally, hardware constraints and develop software creativity. And now the shoebox here from a well-known Swedish furniture uh, store. Um, you see that, I don't know if we, you will see, but there is a Raspberry Pi here. And this is because we ask ourselves how to, to spread the news. Again, we did it on the Raspberry, it was great and funny. Uh, the scientific paper was already done on the human genome, so, and it was just uh, a hacking of the Raspberry Pi, what we did. So we, we think that going to a conference is, is great, but the Raspberry Pi is so small that I told uh, my colleagues that we can put it on the poster for the conference. But in fact, uh, don't try to put a raspberry on a poster, it's not so, uh, so a good idea. Um, so what we did, is this, uh, so this is the first prototype in a paper printing box yeah. um, with an LCD screen, uh, three buttons, and a mini thermal printer. And we called it the Picantigotron in French, P for Raspberry Pi. Contig for contiguous uh, string of DNA. It's the name of uh, what we reconstruct when we assemble genomes. And um, Otron because it's fun. And it's thanks to Olivier who's here today. So this is the last version. And we created a, a little fab lab in my office. And I rediscovered soldering didn't do that since I was uh, 15, I think. Uh, this is um, Guillaume Risk, who helped me uh, constructing the thing. OK. We did a great job. And at the end, we have uh, like a ticket from a store with a piece of DNA reconstructed by the shoebox, which is great. And moreover, uh, I think that when people can manipulate something, as Hugh said, when they manipulate something, they remember what it was. And we got the best paper award uh, at the French uh, Conference on Bioinformatics in 2013. And if you want to try this machine, uh, you are welcome at, uh, at the village uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Um, I was wondering if you have studied other boards uh, else than the Raspberry Pi. And uh, if not, I would suggest to extract the DNA of the banana with the banana pie. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm saying this because I, uh, banana pie is not, is, is, was um, something quite famous years ago, but now we've got a lot of powers of new ARM boards and Intel ones also. So maybe you can achieve uh, other challenge with a more recent uh, hardware. Yeah, it, we did that because I just got uh, the Raspberry Pi on Christmas in 2012. 
Okay. And so I, I went to, uh, I came back to the lab and said, I got a Raspberry Pi, we can do a, a made link thing with, with this. And um, we just, just after a discussion around the coffee, we, we get with this idea. And we didn't uh, think at the beginning that we will go this far with the Raspberry Pi. But yes, we can try other, other boards. Anyway, limitation is a great uh, uh, pretext for challenging. Yeah, and all this, um, I just presented a few um, difficulties we had to put it on the Raspberry Pi, but in fact, we had uh, to make many tunings in the, in the algorithms, how we, how we um, get through the graph, etc., etc. How we count, at the beginning we count k-mers, and this is also uh, very long. So it's, there is many uh, things uh, hidden. Uh, in fact, it's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, so simplicity is sometimes uh, very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, a uh, really great uh, project. Um, would you be interested to uh, to um, uh, now you've got an object, tangible object, that perhaps uh, would be very useful to make uh, non-expert people discover uh, your work and uh, uh, genomics, and uh, because uh, the people they, they will see the box, they will say, "What is it doing? Can I do it myself? Or oh, what is what is the genome? What is the DNA? Uh, would you be interested to to work, for example, with uh, Inria?" to uh, have some students spending some time in, uh, for example, a public space or a public fab lab to open a kind of uh, uh, bio -hack lab also open to everybody and to uh, use a uh, tangible object to make the people discover uh, this uh, um, huge field about science of life. Yeah, I, I think this would be very um, interesting for, for you and for us. To, to share this, and uh, in fact, I discussed with um, people here to make um, this um, not just a box, but some um, pedagogical. Um, uh, I don't know; it's not poster, but um, there is a place here where um, uh, schools can come, cl uh, classes can come, and see what we do here at the Inria. And so we we will, we want to do it. We didn't get the time to do it, but we want to do something like that. Okay, let's make it. Another question? I, I really like the fact that uh, you, 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 you didn't uh, do a scientific paper, you didn't tweet, or you didn't you know, try to make any uh, uh, blog article, but you, what you did is just to, uh, to create an object and people can really concretely uh, mm. click on it, and then I got the results. I suppose we, we should do that a lot uh, within INRIA with other projects because we have a lot of uh, mathematics algorithms which we don't know how to show. Uh, and this, this is a good, uh, a good example. And uh, the question uh, we had uh, during the conference, the, the, uh, most uh, of the time it was, um, but do you think that in the future we will assemble genome on the Raspberry Pi? It's or on small boards, but it's not it's not the aim. The, the, um, the goal of this is to show that it fits in memory. And if we can do it on such a small system, so we can do it a lot on a laptop. For example, we change the parameters of the assembly and we get different results. And uh, I have a colleague who uh, will do that in uh, the everyday um, research. Uh, she reconstructs many times the same uh, genome to see if uh, different parameters are better than others. And before, when, um, when you don't have uh, MINIA, it uh, takes times, it takes um, uh, resources on the cluster, and you cannot launch more than uh, two or three uh, assembly per day. And now she launched uh, 10 to uh, 15 assembly per day. And so it, it opens uh, um, a different way of working on genomics. Yeah. So it, it, it means that perhaps we will have a lot of new uh, new results and new mm. projects coming thanks yes. to the innovation, yes. the fact that you go quicker. 
uh, and for a small size and for a small mm. price, smaller price. And, and why in bioinformatics we are um, so interested in open source software? It's because uh, it's a, the usage is more important because biologists will use our software, our programs, to discover things and they will cite our work, so it's okay for us. We don't have to keep the code, it's not a problem. And even if other people uh, upgrade the code, it's good for us. Exactly. Do, do you think the choice of your license, uh, Afero GPL, is as well uh, important, or, you, or this is just to be open source, uh, whatever your license is? It's not my choice, so uh, I don't know if it's the best fitted for... Uh, oh, it, well, for you, the importance is it's impo open source, in fact. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Thank you very much. Another question? Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, have an, the last talk uh, with Gail and uh, the InMove project, the, robot, the open source and open hardware project that you can print uh, in your house. Pardon? What is that?